Let's quickly repeat the example we just did. But this time, let's not let V equal W. So the derivative of a second degree polynomial is a first degree polynomial. So rather than thinking of the derivative as sending p sub 2 to p sub 2, we could think of it as sending p sub 2 to p sub 1. And since we now are looking at different spaces, our bases are of necessity going to be different. That's that B and C be as you see them there. And that's find the matrix M. And the process is going to be very similar to the process we just did. So we're going to start by applying T to each of these basis vectors in turn. The difference is going to be that we're going to express our answers in terms of the second basis. So rather than 0 times 1 plus 0 times t plus 0 times t squared, we're only going to get to these terms here. T squared is not in the basis C. And we'll then represent T of 1 in terms of C. And get 0, 0. T of T equals 1. And again, we now express this in terms of our basis C. So T of T expressed in terms of C is 1, 0. Our third basis element in B expressed in terms of the basis elements of C so our third column is going to be 0, 2. Put these columns together. And here's our M matrix. The textbook only explicitly states this for the special case where V and W are the same, but it's perfectly true that if you take this matrix, and multiply it by our representation of a second degree polynomial.
we get the derivative. So this matrix times a1, a sub zero plus t, a sub one plus t squared, a sub two is one a sub one plus two a sub two t.